Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two-player insight into some great games for game night. So today we're looking at Village Rails, the teeny tiny card laying rail connecting game. So gather your luggage, mind the step and all aboard for here's five things I think you need to know about it. <laughs> In Village Rails, change is afoot, and it's up to you to bring modern steam trains to the countryside. You create railroad tracks, connecting them up and completing your routes. To get cash, you fulfill your tickets. And to get bonus victory points, you can add trip cards. Plus, there's lots of points to be had on your routes themselves. You've only got 12 spaces to fill to build the best rail network. Thing one, what's this game all about? So Village Rails really focuses in on this idea of kind of bringing modernity to the countryside. Um, and in that sense, you are going to be building your railroad tracks through pastures or wooded areas. Um, so it's a little bit different than most train games. And I really appreciate this move away from kind of the industrial side of trains um, to kind of a more of pastoral one. Um, it just makes it kind of a little bit more fun and more easygoing as a theme. It's all incredibly pleasant. Now, similar games to this, um, well, the first thing that came to mind was something like Sprawlopolis, where you are connecting cards together in the same kind of manner. But I feel like the way that you score points in this game is definitely more robust. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Village Rails really is a game about, yes, connecting routes on those little cards, but also about set collection as well. You're going to start the game with kind of a grid um, that explains your kind of where your trains will start. This is their original stations. And then it's up to you to draft cards throughout the game to place into your tableau and connect them all up um, so that you can get victory points and money. And so during the turn, you are, um, you're allowed to choose one card to add into your tableau. Um, the first card that's shown is free, and then you can pay coins to move further up along and take a higher level card. Um, so money is kind of important here, um, take note. And the only way to get it back is to complete a route. So a bunch of exciting things happen when you finish a route. Um, the first is that you can use a ticket on it to earn money. Um, you have three in your hand at any one time and you want to choose one that kind of has this, <laughs> can score well with the route you finish. So they'll have their own requirements you're going to want to meet if you want to get more money. But even if you don't meet any, you get money, which is nice as well. Um, and now you might want to think about, well, how do I get victory points from my route as well? Because that's different to money. Um, and what can happen here is that you can buy a special kind of trip card um, which you can attach to a route and will you know if you meet its requirements you'll get more victory points um, but also the cards themselves that you place down may have victory points um, scoring on them themselves so there's lots of way to get points kind of going on here um, so the game only has 12 rounds you get 12 goes so you want to be careful with working out where your money goes um, and will you be able to afford to keep getting trains and tracks that you need um, so you can see that kind of dilemma there but this was um, a very fun and well thought out game and one I really enjoyed playing. Thing 3 on the table. So yeah, this one looks lovely um, all set up. And I think part of that appeal is the fact that it's just rows of beautiful colored ordered cards, um, which is really nice. It doesn't take up a lot of space on the table, actually. And I think part of that is to due to the fact that it doesn't have a game board per se. It's just cards in the center. Um, and it was quick to set up and to put away. For two of us, it takes about 30 to 40 minutes to play. And the rule book here was really, really good as well. Had no issues there. 
Now, replayability-wise, um, this game has a number of things going for it. So um, those initial kind of starter edges you get, um, there's four of them in the box, so you can alternate or between them, so you don't always have the same kind of starting positions, which is cool. But also the ticket and the rail cards, um, there's tons of those, and they're actually on the back of the same card. So there's this huge stack of them. So there's plenty there for you to play with each time and not necessarily feel like it's all the same thing for how does this game look and feel okay well firstly I'm not gonna lie I was surprised by the size of the box um, because normally when you think train game you might think you know ticket to ride size box or or bigger or something like that um, and so to find the train game in a tiny box was I don't know um, interesting but what I will say is that why have a bigger box when it's not necessary this is a smaller game and everything in the box fits perfectly into it you know it's just it makes sense right I think more games should be thinking this way do we need all of the bloat is it necessary well I don't think it is in this case um, so the art style um, it's all very countryside pastoral like lovely you know it's all very kind of quaint and, and easy going um, and I think it fits the the style of the game a bit and it definitely holds keeps the idea of you know trains being industrial and business almost to the side um, and instead we get to focus on you know a, like a day to the countryside or something like that which is nice um, and so the art carries through onto the cards they're all kind of cute and adorable as well there's some of them that have nice like things to look at um, my main issue however here is more with I think graphical design than necessarily art but here we go which is that there are symbols that mark um, kind of what type of card each card is on the top right hand corner um, and I found those to be nigh impossible to read at certain points because in certain cases the colors would just blend into other colors um they just don't stand out very well and they're very very small and they're very small and all an already very small card and sometimes you're looking at these cards from a bit of a distance away when you're trying to pick one or something like that and on multiple occasions i chose a card that i thought was one type when really it was another um, and I think that's a, a real drawback here for the game and a real issue. Like you gotta be able to see the symbols. Um, it's kind of important. But otherwise, this is a um, very well put together game. The components are great. I love that little edge board you get for putting your trains into. You also get like a spin down kind of life counter thing, a little wheelie thing to keep track of your life, which I thought was a really nice touch. And all of the cards themselves and that are, are lo lovely, you know. There's a lot crammed into this lovely little box, to be honest. Um, and it, you know, ignore the size of it, there's loads. Thing five, is this game actually any good? So from my first play of Village Rails, I was rather impressed. Um, and I think part of this comes from the fact that I really enjoy a lot of things the game does. Um, so firstly, it's this building your kind of tableau or your grid of cards. Um, and I loved, you know, kind of curating that throughout the game and deciding where things were going to go and watching it build. Um, and it being my own pet project, um, that was, <laughs> was really enjoyable for me. Um, but also the fact that there are lots of kind of goals going on um, and things to achieve throughout the game um, that kind of kept you on your toes. I liked having something to focus on. And then when you would complete um, one, well, you could get another. So there's always something to be doing and it never felt like you were wasting a turn or wasting any time while playing. Um, the truth is, though, this game is deceptively simple. Um, it's just, you know, lay your roots, try and make money off your roots um, and complete out your board in the, the best way possible. But the problem, I suppose, with that as well is that you are never looking at one route individually because the way you build your board, all your routes can become, become kind of interconnected or close to each other. So you had to not only think about the now, but about the future. If I place this now, how will this connect with this later? Um, and that was its own, its own challenge. Um, I found money to be tight when I played. Um, and the only way to get money is to complete routes. So there is this decision about, do I want to complete a route early to have some cash now or do I want to hold off and build a longer route maybe get more cash later um, and that seemed to be kind of like an important decision to be making during the game 
Um, I suppose the only complaint I have here is that this is a very exacting game. It's one where you have to really keep an eye on a lot of things and there will be a lot of things on your board at the same time and keeping track of them isn't the easiest, let alone with all kind of the issues I have with the colours of the symbols not really standing out great. So there's a lot going on here, but in my mind I think that's probably one of the better features because even when there's a hundred things going on it always feels like you're achieving something because there's, there's always something you can do um even if you can't do everything right so you always come away feeling like a little bit of a winner without a doubt this is a superb little game um it's nicely put together it's pretty to look at and it's incredibly satisfying when you can complete a route with three tractors on it do i think you should have village rails in your collection for me personally, yeah, absolutely. This is a really cute and endearing train game that's rather robust inside as well. Um, so yeah, you might want to check it out. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Village Rails, why not shout them off in the comment box below? I'd love to hear from you. So tune in again next time for some more short and hopefully informative board game reviews.